Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, you're going to learn a little something about the company DJI. Now, before I get into the subject matter of this video, I have to mention that today is the 24th of February, 2018. That means everything I'm about to speak of is as of that date. DJI drones are definitely the most popular drones on the market, but are these drones the best drones on the market for the price? Well, we all know that necessity is the mother of invention, and we also know that competition in the market means that me, you, the consumers of drones, will then get the best technology at the best price. So then my question to you is, is there enough competition in the drone market that you and I, as consumers of drones, are getting the best technology at the best price? Or have we simply reached the point where whatever DJI puts out, well, it's gotta be good, right? As an example, this is the newest release product from DJI in the drone market called the Mavic Air. Is it the best? Well, if you watched every reviewer who reviewed this drone on the date it was launched that DJI sent a pre-release version to, you'll see that not only were those reviewers all excited, but they were talking about this drone as if it cured baldness or glaucoma. It was so amazing. Hey, don't get me wrong, I like the Mavic Air. I actually really like the Mavic Air, but it's nothing new. It's basically a Spark, an upgraded Spark. And it's got a little bit of the Mavic Pro technology in it, you know, but it's nothing new. It's just a refresh of existing technology. However, with that being said, there is nothing on the market today that can compete with the Mavic Air. It is in a class of its own. So why then did DJI release it and take sales away from the Spark and the Mavic Pro? For the simple reason that DJI is the drone market leader in most price categories. Now the Mavic Air is in the $500 to $999 price category and DJI wants to ensure that with so many competitors starting to enter that price category that they maintain their dominance. Take for example, Autel Robotics and their Evo, which is basically a copy of the Mavic Pro. The Evo drone is coming out this summer and is stated to retail for $999 for the base model. When the Evo drone was announced at CES, there was a lot of media hype around it. However, shortly thereafter, DJI came out and said, you know what, we've got a Mavic Air that can do many of the things the Evo does and it costs much less. So already before the Evo is even launched, people are no longer as interested in it because they've already spent money on the Mavic Air. Now, DJI being a Chinese company, they're used to people copying them and I'm sure they copy other people's products as well. However, Chinese companies don't really get too much in litigation about you copied me, I copied you, I'm suing you, you sue me. Not so much in China. What they do more so is they just put other companies out of business. So DJI has been really good at it. And I'm pretty sure that by the time Autel is about to release the Evo and people can actually purchase it, right before that, good old DJI is gonna come out with the Mavic Pro 2, which is gonna have features similar to the Autel, but a way better. It's not like DJI creates these products overnight. They have a host of products all sitting in their R&D labs, but they don't release them until the time is right. And the time is usually right when you can really put the competition out of business. So my point then is that DJI has perfected the art of killing or reducing the competition in most categories. That leaves pretty much DJI as the sole survivor. But is that good for us, the consumer? Now, while you think about that, let me give you a little bit of background about DJI and how they've come to be so powerful and what they've done to get there. See this Harry Potter looking guy here holding a phantom controller? That is Frank Wang. He is the brains and founder of DJI. He founded DJI in 2006. With his engineering background, he built a flight controller for RC model planes, which was better than anything on the market at the time. So once he began selling it, well, DJI was born. In 2008, DJI began selling products in China, and by 2009, DJI was selling products outside China. And by the year 2012, DJI had amassed a revenue of 26 million. All that revenue allowed for the R&D and production of the Phantom, which was released in 2013. Now the DJI Phantom was a little slow to start, but it soon became a hit because it was better than most other products on the market, and it came in at a really good price. By 2014, DJI revenue had jumped to 500 million. Today, DJI is a billion dollar company, and Frank Wang, well, he owns 45% of DJI, so he is, of course, a billionaire. DJI has more than 8,000 employees worldwide, and what is significant 
highlight is that a quarter of that workforce are within research and development. They also have their own production facility, so each time they create a new product, very little of that product is contracted out. Due to the large R&D department at DJI, they have many products ready for production. Yet, DJI will only release a product when the time is right. For example, remember the GoPro Karma announced back in September of 2016? At that time, DJI only had the Phantom 4 on the market, which was a really good drone, but unfortunately not a very portable drone. GoPro had just announced their new GoPro Karma, which had foldable arms and legs and could fit in a backpack. Many people thought the GoPro Karma was a strong competitor to the DJI Phantom. However, a few weeks after GoPro announced the Karma, DJI announced the Mavic Pro with foldable arms and an extremely portable size with specs that were superior to the Karma. By the time GoPro launched the Karma, the hype had settled and few people were interested. Therefore, they only launched the GoPro Karma in the US and it didn't help that the ones they did launch were falling out of the sky. Now, there are times when DJI has been caught off guard with a competitor's product. Remember when Unique partnered with Intel to create the RealSense avoidance system and then stuck that avoidance system on the new Typhoon H and demoed the Typhoon H with the avoidance system at CES in 2016? Well, DJI had nothing like it. DJI drones at that time did not have obstacle avoidance. So in March of 2016, DJI finally launched the Phantom 4, which was the first DJI drone to have obstacle avoidance. And DJI went one step further and added Active Track. This was something other drones did not have. Even with all of this, DJI still had a problem because initial sales of the Phantom 4 were not as great as expected. It seemed potential consumers were waiting for the release of the unique Typhoon H with its retractable gear and 360 camera and Intel RealSense obstacle avoidance. DJI fully expected to lose market share, so they went forth with a lawsuit against Unique to stop the sale of the Typhoon H in the US. DJI was not successful and the Typhoon H went on sale and actually competed against both the Phantom and the Inspire 1. For this reason, DJI lowered the price of the Inspire 1. So has DJI's competitive business model worked for it? Well, they have definitely taken a page from the Apple playbook. This is DJI's flagship store in Shenzhen. Does it kind of look familiar to the Apple flagship store? DJI is the only Chinese drone company that sells drones in Apple stores. Now, since one of the most expensive parts of a drone is actually the camera, DJI purchased the Swiss Hasselblad camera company. This was so DJI could produce great cameras and lenses that would be lightweight for drones to carry. DJI has 72% of the global drone market share. That is a massive achievement. And in North America alone, DJI has 62% of the drone market share. And what age group buys drones? Well, it seems it is the 30 year olds and above. So marketing from DJI will always be targeted at these age groups. And that fits nicely with a recent poll conducted in the US. The poll asked, how much did you pay for your last drone? And it seems most people paid over $1,000. So for this reason, you'll see that DJI really wants Wants to make drone products that fall in the $1,000 to $2,000 price range. If you look at the drones sold in the $500 to $999 range, DJI is maintaining its lead in the competition. You can be certain that DJI will continue to release a drone or drones in the sub $500 range as well. So what does this massive DJI dominance of the market mean for competitors? Well, the GoPro Karma is no more. The company Parrot has laid off much of its workforce and discontinued products. 3DR and their famous solo is no more. Unique has laid off staff and is producing lower priced products as well as repackaging old products such as the Typhoon H. And as previously noted, DJI could make it worse for Autel by releasing the Mavic Pro 2 in the next five months. So then what happens if DJI is the sole survivor and controls the drone market? Well then, that means DJI controls the asking price for drones and they also control the innovation. Things could get rather boring. Or even worse, the DJI customer service could become terrible. So do I think this will ever happen? Well, based on the data I have today, I'll have to say no. The reason being is that if I look at drone sales for the past few years, they're really good and they increased year after year. And if I look at what the analysts think are the forecasted drone sales and demand over the next few years, they are extremely good. That means if I was a startup company and I created some really cool drone and I entered the market and I sold a lot of drones, I could own 2% of the market 1% and guess what? My revenues would still be in the millions. So DJI is not a bad company. They're actually a really smart company and they're doing quite well. And 
Myself, as an enthusiast of drones, I really like their products, but I really wish there was more competition out in the market so I had more selection and more choices. I'm finding the choices and selection are becoming less and less. All right, so that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative and gave you some food for thought. Feel free to comment below and provide me your own insights into the drone industry. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.